we've, we've basically got the side view of the wall. Okay? And I'm, I'm trying to suggest to you that the 2x4 wall that you have with the insulated sheathing is better than the 2x6 wall. Okay? So just follow my arrow right here, okay? Can you guys see it? Mm -hmm. If we have the indoor temperature at 68 and the outdoor temperature is 25 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 4 Celsius or whatever, the surface temperature of the plywood or the OSB sheathing in the 2x6 wall is below freezing. If any moisture gets in there and condenses, if it freezes, it can compromise the thermal effectiveness of the wall, but it can also grow mold. Look at the wall that Baywood's built. Look at the temperature. Because the foam is on the outside, it's keeping everything inside of it warm, which is good, right? Because it's not going to freeze, it's not going to condense, and grow mold. And your walls are tight, so you don't have much moisture moving in and out of it anyway. Anybody have any questions about that? Okay. The seams. What do we do with the seams? Well, there, it's getting covered again with building paper. But well, they're using the poly on the inside under the drywall to make it airtight. So again, a little bit of a hole here. The wind actually can't pressurize it if the inside of the wall is airtight. Okay. So is this how? Um, all the rooms in the house are going to stay the same temperature? Like, Partially, like yeah. I was saying to you in our house now, oh, the room over the garage is cold in the winter. Okay, so, so our concern is, is that in this house, but is that what's going, this is what's going to alter Well, that? okay, so that, that's a really good point. So if we take a wall, it's too bad we aren't on, out on the construction site. You know all the studs? So when you add up all the studs, it equals 25 or 30 percent of the wall, okay, the square footage. So that means one wall in your house is solid wood. What's the insulated value of wood? Is it as much as this? No. So on all the other houses people are buying, whether they're using wood to sheathe the walls on the outside, 25 percent of that wall is only about R10. Okay? As soon as we put the sheathing on it, look what happens to the wall. It gets closer to the actual R20 because the heat can't escape through the studs. And I don't know if you're following me yet, but the reason that you're cold in your house now, people are talking about not having enough insulation, your body wants to maintain 98.6. These surfaces are colder than your body. That's why you feel cold. Your body is radiating heat to that surface. You understand? So as soon as we put the foam on the outside of the wall, you see the wall temperature on the inside of the wall? It goes up. What does that mean for your body? It's not going to be losing as much heat. Okay? This is really good. This is just like your sweater. So if you didn't have your sweater on right now, that would be like the house that has the 2x6 studs. You'd be cold. If you took your sweater off right now, you're sitting near that window, your body's going to start losing heat to it. It's called radiant heat loss. Okay? I put three inches of that, that's where I was going before, whatever, but I put three inches of that stuff down over the renovation I've been doing, and it immediately warmed up overnight. Like, yeah, yeah. It super impressed me. I ship lapped it and taped it along the seams all 300 square feet. So instead of that thick, it was this. Yeah. The blue stuff. Yeah. And it was like, it was phenomenal. It was just like a whole different place in there, a whole different environment. Yeah. So there's another testimony that makes it huge. Yeah. I know it's freezing in there the day before. Okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> spray foam in the garage. Because you were saying yeah. the ones above your garage are cold. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The ceiling of the garage. No, and you actually asked that question. You want yeah. to ask that question now? Well, because we were concerned our daughter's going in that room that's above the garage, and that was one of our major concerns because she's young. We don't want her to be in a room that's cold all the time. So 
we weren't like you guys told us no that's not the way it's gonna be and this house is an energy efficient home. So we just wonder why why is it better than what we have now? Obviously so this down, but and, and it is a, it is a man woman problem because women's core body temperatures are higher. That's why you guys always feel cold. No, seriously, everybody you talk to, you're cold in that room, right? So it, that's important for your daughter. But as Sherry was saying, the area over the ceiling over the garage, which isn't heated, actually has more half-pound foam in it. So it's got R31 there, and because it's foam, the air can't move through it. And when the air moves through fiberglass or other bad insulations, it loses about 50% of its effectiveness. Okay? So you've got this really well-insulated floor, you've got more insulation in the attic above, you have Energy Star windows, which are actually better than the building code windows. So you have all these surfaces that are going to be warmer. Okay? And the last thing is, you actually have a heating system. You mentioned that all the joints are taped. Why would we tape all the joints in a duct system? Right? 30% they leak. So now that room up there is actually going to get more air delivery. Okay? They used to be tape, they just told you like a duct tape. It's in there, so we can go in there if you yeah. want to see. And, and anybody that's got a house now and wants to see how to do a little bit of maintenance on their ventilation system, I can show you that. Okay? Okay? So we made the cavity bigger so we could get more insulation in it. But this is another technological advance where we don't have to use as much wood in the wall. And why do we need trees? Yeah, they're actually taking all that CO2, they want it. They take it in and they give us oxygen back. So we need to think about how many trees we're cutting down to, okay? And then there's the whole thing about mold, right? So we got this nice warm wall, no problems with mold. Actually getting, and if you look through your Schedule B from the builder, that's what you should actually see in there. Different here are outlined in blue. So many of us, if we hadn't bought the Energy Star house, would have this configuration here. And every single one of these things is different. Everything, everything in blue, everything Energy Star is better. We've got more insulation in the attic. It still looks like R40, but there's this little thing called eave compression. So at the eave, where it comes down onto the the plates, if you look out the window, you can see an eave there. You know when we used to get ice damming? We get those big icicles and the ice build up on the end of the roof. That's because we don't have enough insulation there. Energy Star is getting the builders to use these raised steel trusses that allow for more insulation there so we won't get ice damming. So we don't need that ice, uh, ice sheets or whatever. We don't need that under the shingles. No, you don't. Three feet or so around? Well, the building code says you do on a low slope. But the slope that you have, no, the shingles are enough. And roofers are always trying to talk people into doing that so they can charge them more money. But the issue really is not enough insulation, okay? So let's just go down this list quick. So, again, Sherry was saying the garage has got R31, but it's not fiberglass, it's foam. And foam is much better, right? Just like this, okay? So the wall insulation, the building code is 19, but it's got those studs. 30% of the wall is solid wood. Your wall, I gotta admit here, but you've got closer to an R20, a true R20, using the two by four walls. And what's better about it, I just gotta go back and change that, is that you're using less wood in your walls, right? Okay, so you got full height basement insulation. So that's our 12 in the basement. Yeah. You're saying that's sufficient. <laughs> yeah, and if you guys finish your basements, you can actually add a little bit more. 
So you don't have to tear all the insulated blanket off. You can actually add another R8 onto that. Okay? Is anybody going to finish their basement here by themselves? Are you going to get Baywood to do it? Okay. You, you can put more insulation in. You should be asking Baywood for more insulation.